Hello and welcome to part one of Jumbo Rainbow Unicorn Pillow. Today I am using a hook size 4 or an F and I am using So Crafty Aran Yarn. This is cream, the original pillow is in white. Okay, so to start off with we are going to make a magic ring. Chain two. Now we're going to add 11 double crochets into the ring We will be counting the chain two as a stitch. So in total, you are looking for 12 stitches. Right, once, once you have your 12 stitches, close up your uh, magic ring. We'll pull it a little bit tighter later if need be. Now if you count back from the hook for your 12th stitch it is the top of the chain 3 can be a little bit tight sometimes but make sure you've got your two on the top of your hook and then slip stitch to join and chain two now for round two we are going to increase in each stitch so to increase that is two double crochets in each stitch around
Right at this point I suggest that you pull up your working thread and check that you have 12 groups of two double crochet or 24 stitches however you feel like counting them up. Once you've completed that go into the top of your chain three and do a slip stitch and then chain two. Right so now for round three place another double crochet in the same place as your chain stitch and then one double crochet next door now two double crochets in the next stitch now one double crochet now two double crochets and carry on the one double crochet two double crochet pattern all the way around If you carry the one double crochet and two double crochet pattern all the way around and I will meet you at the end. Right so we are now coming up to the last stitch which is a single. I'll place that one in there. And now slip stitch into the top of the chain three and chain two. So for row four you place another double crochet in with the uh, chain. Now we do two double crochets in the next two stitches followed by an increase which is two double crochets in the same so that's two double crochets in the same stitch now this is where we repeat so we've got two double crochets in the next two stitches and an increase in the next and we carry that same pattern round until the end of the round I will meet you back there when, when you're done and the last stitch comes in here so at the end of this round you should have 48 stitches. Once you've done your count, join to the top of the chain three with a slip stitch and chain two. For round five, we place our increase in the same spot as normal. Now we put in three double crochets into the next three spaces followed by an increase now this is our pattern repeat for the rest of the way round so that's three double crochets followed by an increase I'll leave you to keep going and I'll see you when we get back to the end 
Okay, so we are coming up onto the end of uh, row five. Last stitch going in now. Once you finish this round, you should have a stitch count of 60. Now we are going to slip stitch into the top of the chain. Then we will do our chain three and start on round six. Now for round six, place your first increase next to your chain as you've done in previous rows. Now we will be doing four double crochets and then you increase. fourth and there's the increase so the pattern again for this is four double crochets in the next four stitches followed by an increase now we'll do that all the way around and I'll be, meet you back here shortly so I'm back with you at this point we are coming to the end of round six. You should have a stitch count of 72. Once you've counted them up, run your slip stitch into the top of your chain three. To complete the round, then we will chain three. So for the start of chain seven, you chain your three, you put your double crochet into the same hole as your chain three. Now we will be placing five double crochets in the next five stitches, followed by your increase stitch. You will carry on this pattern all the way around. So that is five double crochet, followed by an increase, followed by five double crochet, followed by an increase. I'll see you when I get to the end. So we are just coming back just coming to the end of a row five this is where your stitch count should come in at 84 once you've counted connect it up to the top of your chain three uh, with your slip stitch chain three And we'll get on with uh, round eight. So for round eight, we'll place our stitch in the same spot as previous rows. Now we will be putting six single crochets in the next six stitches, followed by an increase. And that's our pattern repeat all the way around. Six single crochets, followed by your increase okay I'll leave you to get on with that and I'll meet you back here when you're finished okay back with you so we are now at the end of row eight you should have a stitch count of 96 once you know that's that's what you got do you slip stitch to close your circle chain two and we'll start on to row nine. So for row nine, you place your first in there, which is your increase, followed by seven, um, seven double crochets around, and then your chain two, and then another seven. Keep repeating that pattern until you get to the end. Just a heads up, I'm playing your, I am playing video chicken because I'm running out of time. I'll show you what I mean. Photo to follow. At this point, you should have a stitch count of 108. 
once you know you've got that slip stitch into the top of your chain three now chain a new chain three and we'll start on row 10 now for row 10 it is place your increase in so you've placed your chain three and your first stitch for your increase into the first spot now we are going to do eight double crochets into the next eight spaces followed by an increase that is our pattern for this round eight double crochet then an increase i'll see you at the end of the round okay i'm back with you so we are at the end of round 10 so we just finish that last stitch off now you should have a count of 120 at this point once you know you've got that slip stitch into the top of your chain three chain three and we'll get ready to start the next row okay so now for row 11 you will have an, your increase in the first you will then carry on by placing nine double crochets in the next nine spaces followed by your double crochet carry on all the way around at the end of this row you will you should have 132 stitches on your hook right back with you for round 12 again you place your double in that spot there we will now We will now be doing 10 double crochets followed by your increase all the way round and that will bring you to 144. I'll see you at the end. I am back with you now for row 13. I'm just chaining up my chain. Placing my stitch in the same spot. So for row 13 we will be chaining 11 double crochets into the next 11 nine spots followed by your increase and we'll carry on that pattern all the way around so that is 11 double crochets followed by your increase when you get to the end your stitch count should come in at 156 we'll see you at the end of the round right we're now on to row 14 now this is the last row of this color for us so again we've chained up three we are now placing our double into the first hole now we will carry on round and this time we are doing 12 double crochets around followed by your increase keep going all the way to the end and i'll meet you there in a moment okay so i'm back with you we are at the end of row 14 we're just about to place our last stitch in so this time around we're changing it up because we'll be changing color so if you hook over once and go through hook over go through two stop at this point this is where you add your next color to pop your loop over and finish off the stitch and now we'll finish off the round by placing the slip stitch in the end at the top of the chain three there we go nice clean color change so to start row 15 you chain one turn your work slightly facing you now as you can see we've got the V's on the top here we will now be doing a back post single crochet for this entire round so to do that you just place your hook through that one loop at the back on the back of your V you hook over pull through and carry on your stitch as you would normally do with your single crochet so we'll do that again into the back loop hook over single crochet back loop hook over single crochet now we're going to do that for the whole round 
which should be 168 stitches. I will see you at the uh, other end. Welcome back. Now we're coming up to the end of row 17. So all we've got left to do now is do a slip stitch to close up the round. Now I like to loop over and pull it through and then pull up a reasonable amount of thread before cutting off. So pull up a reasonable amount for sewing in and then cut off. And there we go. So now you've finished this one, what I do suggest is that you um, put yourself a little stitch marker at the front of your work because that will make it easier for the next section. But before we get to that next section, you're gonna, I'm going to need you to make another one um, of these cycles exactly the same way. And then, but when you get to the end of that one, do not cut your thread. I will meet you back here when you've finished it. See you soon. Right, so you've now got your two panels. Um, the first one I would say is now it's best time to sew in all your loose ends. Now, where I join my two colours here, um, I've tied a knot and I'll be sewing the pink to the pink and the white to the white in a few moments um, and then that's all of my ends sewn in um, and then step two is to place a, another stitch counter okay in the on the front on your front panel if you count forward from um, where you finished 40 foot count forward 44 stitches and place a stitch marker in there and then on your back panel count back from your last stitch 44 and place a stitch marker in there and um, you'll get it um, you'll understand why I've asked you to do this when we get to the next point see you in a moment okay so now we've done all the sewing in um, I'm back with you now. I've laid my work out so my panels, the front sections of each of the panels are facing each other. This is why um, I said about popping on your stitch marker because it makes it so much easier to find. Okay, so now what we do is you pop your loop from your back panel back onto your work. Uh, onto your working hook. Line your work up. Now we will be taking, let's hope we can see this clearly, the so we are going to go in through the back loop of the front panel and out through the front loop of the back panel. Hook over, pull through, finish it off as a slip stitch. That's in through the back loop of the front panel and out through the front loop of the back panel. Pull the loop through and finish off as a slip. Again, that's in through the back loop of the front panel and out through the front loop of the back panel. And finish it off as a slip stitch. in through the front uh, the back loop of the front panel and out through the front loop of the back panel and finish off as a slip stitch and we just keep doing the same thing all the way around until you get to your markers I'll meet you back there in a little while okay so I've just removed my marker and I'm now going into my last stitch. There we go. Now, what I've done is I've tried to give you 
the stitch count so that it pulls in quite close to where your increase is running up the white center uh, running running up the center of your white section now the reason I've done that is because it then will give you three sections here now those three three sections will hopefully give you enough room to pop your pillow or cushion insert in and then um, when we're sewing up the rest of it once the insert is in it means then that none of the next set of stitches that you will do will be seen because they will be under the um, horn ears and hair All right so it will look like a completely invisible join by the time we get to the end of the project so now pull up your working yarn and place your stitch marker um, onto the end of that now we are going to turn your case the right way round uh, yeah the right way round and if you see here this was the seam that we've just worked so it gives you a nice little edge a little bump in the middle which I quite like actually it makes it look like a ginormous cookie or something so once you finish turning this inside out place your pillow insert in and then meet me back here and I will just um, explain how I did the next bit to close. Hiya, right, um, my main issue is that I didn't have a round insert to put in. I have literally only got a square. So to get around that, I cheekily cut the corner, pulled out the stuff in from each of the four corners, stuck it inside the pillow, um, and then have basically sat there and shaped it, shaped the stuffing inside the case to ensure that it's as round as I can get it. And then I've just sewn the end, um, sewn the hole um, that I'd originally cut into the case. Hopefully that will give you an idea on what you can do if you haven't got a round pillow. Right, so I'm back with you now. Now all we're doing is grabbing the back loop on the bottom and the top loop on the top because this bit is going to be not be seen so it's not so much of an issue now this is extremely fiddly now and just solely because I'm sitting at the most awkward angle so I'm now going to swap the camera to be facing down um, so that you can see a little easier but it will be reversed There we go, just the back loops of both, pull through and finish it off as a slip stitch. <coughs> back loops on both, pull through, finish it off as a slip. Now we're going to do that all the way to the end of the row. I'm going to do this off camera as well because as you can see it is very fiddly and my brain and my hands and my mouth are not all working as a team and I've tried recording this five times now see you shortly right so we're on to the last few stitches now oh this one's a nightmare That's quite a tight one because that is where the um, starting, uh, the ending knot was. Now what I like to do is I like to go just underneath the first stitch again and then pull it through to then finish off. Okay, so then we cut off the yarn and my cheeky suggestion for this one is when sewing in this end you go back along this raised stitch here you sew it sort of into here because this is where you're going to be sewing in the ears the horn and the hair so this this whole section here is not going to get seen okay so i hope you enjoyed this first video sorry if it was a bit hit and miss um hopefully you'll join me to do the next section 
I'll see you shortly. Bye.